today I'm going to show you how to adjust the output regulator on the 13 cubic inch uh, 3000 PSI uh, bottles when you purchase these 13 uh, I believe they're aluminum or steel uh, ninja bottles they come to you regulated 800 PSI um, here is a valve uh, from an older bottle I'll show you what's inside so unscrewing this reveals okay whoops let's see that would be on that side would reveal the bottom piece with a shim okay this is a point one uh i'm sorry yeah point zero two one shim on this side you have a spring a piston a light spring and a ball bearing so that's the top part of the regulator again the ball bearing goes in there followed by the spring followed by the piston which gets pushed in place then this really heavy spring this is what regulates it to 800 that goes around the piston this is the bottom half this is the top half the washer drops in there make sure it's everything is clean goes together screw it down by the way that crunching you hear is <laughs> the grub screw rubbing against the threads make sure you back it out this is an old one so I don't care all right and that would be on top of the regulator when you purchase it what we're gonna do is replace that that spring you saw with something called Belleville washers okay here's what they look like they're concave in shape you're gonna need a dozen of them and I'll put in the video, I'll show you where I got them, McMaster and Carr, and what size they are. So you get the exact washers that you need. Again, these are Belleville washers. And then to regulate the bottle, you may need some shims, different size shims. So I have 0 0.005, 0 0.010, and 0 0.020. So you have different size shims. These are very, very thin. These are flat shims. These are not Belleville washers. So there's two types. There's the Belleville washers, which are cone, conical in shape. And then you have the flat washers, uh, the shims that go on the bottom. Okay, so again, just to recap, Belleville washers replace that silver spring you saw on the inside here. And the shims are on the bottom. And that's how we're going to adjust uh, the 800 output to be something more. 11, 12, 13, 14, whatever you're looking for. So, Belleville's will replace this spring and the shims in case you need more to get higher output. So now we're going to have to remove the air from these bottles. Um, a note on safety, please always wear safety glasses. Do not attempt to take this apart or any regular or anything high pressure air with air in it, always remove the air. What I'm going to do is I'm going to show you how to use a slide check, something I made. Um, this is a Ninja product. has a little N, if you can see that. This item slides back and forth. It's connected to an ASA. So that's this right here. ASA, the slide check, and a manometer. Okay, so I have a little Teflon tape in there. Uh, you don't need Teflon tape when you connect the slide check to the Ninja ASA, it already has some, uh, some material on it to uh, create a good seal. When you slide the slide check to the outer position, it releases the air. When it's in the inner position, it's sealed, it's closed. So let's remove the air from the bottle. Again, make sure your, your Ninja ASA is in the up position and the slide check is closed. Screw it on. Hmm. Okay, there we go. All right, keeping the closed. Let's test. This bottle says 13, 1300 right here. All right, let's see what it says on the manometer. Above 12, uh, 1250, 1300. Yeah, there you so go. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is release the air. We're gonna push the slide check in this position. 
is releasing air nice and slow as you can see a little bit at a time no need to do it too fast that was pretty quick <laughs> okay slide it back and forth you can see air is still coming out when it gets cold it freezes in there all right make sure all the air is out it's reading zero open the ASA uh, or close the bottle unscrew shouldn't be difficult to unscrew so as a double check I never trust that the even though the manometer is reading zero there's a little valve up here a little ball let's push down nothing's coming out I'm fairly confident there's no air in here let's unscrew the two grub screws on the top this is to take the top piece off here there's there's two portions to this there's a top piece and then the piece that's connected to the bottle the regulator is this top two pieces on the top but you're only removing the top piece let's unscrew it okay both now I'm gonna back them out halfway a little more than halfway and I'm gonna use that leverage because it's very hard to to, un to unscrew this top piece so what I'm gonna do is use the Allen key as leverage put it in place counterclockwise it shouldn't be that difficult just it, it is a little tight at first be careful not to let the grub screws rub against the threads on the inside okay now it's very loose so I'm gonna back it out take the grub screws off by hand that's one here's the other unscrew this by hand and this one's already been adjusted okay there's a shim whoops two shims so I have two point zero one shims to make up point uh, zero two actually here huh okay so there are three shims inside here inside the bottle were three shims the red one which is the point zero two uh, shim and I have two point zero one shims so that's a total of point zero four shimming okay doesn't matter what order you put them in it just creates a thickness okay and you can check that using a caliper let's see if I'm right yep point zero four okay so I have three shims in there okay. point zero on the other side you're gonna hear a little pop you can just remove wiggle it okay really tight there you go hear that pop let me get these out there we go so there is there's a spring the piston with the Belleville washers and a ball bearing now this is a good time to clean it out remember never use oil silicone grease you don't need any grease no no grease no oil don't never use it uh, oil is combustible action so here are the Belleville washers arranged these are a dozen two four six eight ten twelve now there are two arrangements that you can do okay so there are two arrangements you can do the bottom one represents the bottle I'm opening now you have two concave in the hour position and one two three four pairs facing each other and then two in the opposite direction that's 12 in another bottle I had one in the outward position followed by one two three four five pairs you know connecting to each other and another one facing the opposite direction so I noticed that if you use this top uh, arrangement for the dozen uh, .032 Belleville washers you can use less shims the bottom one you need more shims uh, it, it you know they 
again, this is not a science. This could, it's somewhat of a science, more of an art. Um, it's not exact. So you could do either arrangement. Just remember that if you do the top arrangement, you'll probably need only 0 0.02 shims. If you use the bottom arrangement, uh, I'm, yes, 0 0.02, the bottom arrangement will require more shimming. Uh, again, it's all trial and error, but you get, a, you get a sense. You'll be right in the ballpark as long as you're using a dozen Belleville washers in either of these configurations. Um, you can always start with a .02 shim, test it out, see what you get. You'll probably get around 1100 uh, PSI output. You'll just add more shims. The more shims you add, the more power you'll get, uh, the more output you'll get. Uh, so again, the, these are the arrangements. Now let me show the actual uh, Bellevilles. I'm going to pull them off the piston here, hopefully all at once, and they won't fall apart. All right. So here are here are the Bellevilles pulled off. This is the piston, and here are the Bellevilles. There. So again, let's put it back together. So two in the outward position and four pairs facing each other, followed by two in the opposite position. So let's put them back together. Here is the piston. We'll start with two in the outward position. Just checking the, make sure there's no grease on it, it looks clean. Okay, now we're going to do four pairs facing each other. Here's pair number one, pair number two, pair number three, pair number four, and then the last two in the outward position. See if you can see that. Okay, so there they are. A dozen washers. Okay. In that configuration, the bottom configuration that I showed you. Okay. So just put that back into the top portion. Remember you have your, let me show you. So again, you have your bull bearing, okay? So you have your bull bearing, your small spring, your piston with the Belleville washers arranged. Push that down, okay? The top of the bottle with your shims. Again, this arrangement, which is the bottom arrangement, uses 0.04 two thickness of shims. When you're putting it back together, don't let them fall out, kind of keep them together like this. Hand tighten them as much as you can. Okay, almost all the way. All right, grub screws. Remember, put the grub screws in halfway, a little less than halfway. Use that to grab the Allen key and tighten down the other grub screw. That's it, it's pretty tight. You don't have to tighten the grub screw too much. I mean, it's already pretty tight and the pressure from the air will keep the, the cap on. And we've just now made this a 1300 output. Now this bottle is empty. So this bottle is empty right now. Let's fill it up with air. Again, safety glasses. I'm gonna use a scuba tank to fill these guys up. And then we'll read the output pressure. Okay, so I'm gonna fill it up using a SCBA tank. These are fireman tanks. Uh, these are 4,500 PSI. Uh, in another video, I'll show in the next video I make, uh, which should be same you know, today, same day. Uh, I'll show you how not to make the mistake I made of buying an expired tank uh, and getting 
something like this. This is a 30 minute, this is a 60 minute tank. Uh, really cool. All right, so no more hand pumps. Here we go. Connecting it with a foster. Make sure the bleed valve is down. Okay. I have a flow control valve here and we're going to fill up this bottle. Slowly, we're gonna do this nice and slowly. Oh, we're getting a little leak there. Okay, we're filling up nice and slow. These bottles get very, very hot. Okay. All right, we filled it up. The bottle did get a little warm. We have a bleed valve here. Remember, you never want to disconnect this line. Um, it'll, it's very dangerous, so we're gonna use a big, I have this big bleed valve right here. Slowly, we got it up to 2,000. We're gonna bleed it again. All right. Wow. Disconnect it safely. Cap back on. And again, I'll show you how to purchase uh, a fireman's tank, an SCBA uh, self-contained breathing apparatus tank, not a scuba self-contained underwater breathing. This is not for underwater. These are fireman tanks, but that's for another video. So here we have it. Let's use the slide check to check what output. Now this bottle is a little warm. Uh, it's up to 2000, which is above the output regulation uh, regulator, so uh, uh, pressure, so it should read whatever the maximum is. Going to screw this down. Okay, make sure the slide check is in the closed position. Here we go. And it's reading just on the 1300. So that's where I had the bottle. I keep them around 1300. Now, if I wanted to get this bottle higher, I would add another shim. Um, let me put this here. Now you want to do it slowly when you're adding shims. I would use, I've labeled them, this is a 0 .005 shim. There's usually, I think, uh, 10 in a pack. Yeah, these come 10 in a pack. Again, from a Mac, Mick Master and Carr. I have 0 .01 shims and I have 0 .02 shims. But always start slow, start with the 0 .005, add them, you'll see the pressure. Sometimes it jumps uh, a, a little bit quicker. They, there's something called creep. Uh, it shouldn't happen, but I think it happens sometimes with, depending on the, the washers you use them. These are supposed to be pretty good quality washers, stainless steel washers, so we shouldn't get too much creep. Um, but right now, it's reading about 12, uh, 12, let's see, can you see that? It's reading about 1250, 1300, okay? Can't remove the slide check without removing the air that's up here in the top portion. There's air in here right now. If you try to, un you know, it'll bust off. So here we go, let the air out slowly. There you go, it's gone. So I'm just pushing it back and forth. Then you can unscrew. And one last thing that I wanna to mention to you regarding making adjustments to the regulator. Uh, there are burst discs on the top of the regulator. So let's see. Let's see if you can see that. So there is a 1.8 here and a 5K here. Now the 5K is for the bottle and the 1.8 is for the regulator at the top. I recommend buying some extra burst discs. I recommend you go out and buy uh, some extra burst discs. 1.8 and 5 K's, here they are. They're just replaceable right here and they just screw in. So you'll just replace them there.